What's up everybody, it's Jason Cruz here once again with another episode of The Legal Submission. We're back and we have a lot of a lot of things to talk about before the end of the year. First thing we're going to be talking about is the UFC antitrust lawsuit. Now we're probably going to start to talk about it uh, in terms of the Lee case, the Lee antitrust lawsuit, because we have a trailing case, Cajun Johnson and CB Dalloway's case against Zufa, similar claims, but um, from two, two, 2017 to the present. As we know in the Lee antitrust lawsuit, we have a trial date set for April 8th, 2024 and it looks like full steam ahead and we get we are starting to get uh, some filings from both parties in relation to the strategy coming up to the case and the first one I wanted to talk about was a filing from last week in which Zufa filed three motions to exclude the motions are to exclude the experts that uh, the lead plaintiffs have have uh, set uh, Dr. Hal Singer, Dr. Andrew Zimbalist, and Guy Davis. Now, uh, we are going to focus on probably the most important expert and the one that's getting a lot of uh, interest at this particular point, Dr. Hal Singer. To back up a little bit, Zufa had filed these motions to, uh, to exclude uh, prior to the class certification uh, period. It <clears throat> came out in the order from Judge Bulware that he was denying those motions to exclude. In fact, uh, it, he indicated it specifically in the order that was uh, came out this past August that the ways in which uh, plaintiff's experts, including Hal Singer, utilized their uh, opinion, their expert reports and came to their conclusions and opinions uh, were relevant. And despite the fact that they were using these methodologies in a new industry, MMA, uh, it did not matter and they were valid scientific claims made uh, by made by uh, all of the experts um, by uh, the lead plaintiffs. So now we get, come to the point where uh, we are heading towards trial and Zufa has come back to file uh, the motions to exclude again. Now the thought process here is that the court would now be looking more at the merits of the case, of the uh, reports and expert opinions rather than just uh, is does the expert opinions uh, suffice uh, the class certification state. So the assumption we have here is that there's much more uh, of a standard to meet uh, at, at this particular point rather than at uh, the stage before cla challenging class certification. From the UFC standpoint, the, the filing these motions obviously um, may be a losing battle based on what we've learned from the order from Judge Bulware, but it preser at least preserves their opportunity for appeal at the end of the trial if this were to come toward a verdict. And at least they would exhaust all of their possibilities prior to going to trial. It, it also, you know, comes up with the, the fact that, hey, maybe the judge changes his mind. And in fact, uh, that leads us to Dr. Hal Singer's expert report here because news came out this past week that Epic Games won its antitrust lawsuit against Apple uh, in that uh, long, long, long lawsuit uh, related to the Fortnite video game. Uh, and uh, one of the key components there was expert Dr. Hal Singer. Last year, that court in the Epic Games lawsuit uh, allowed for the class certification to go forward in that particular lawsuit, uh, and it was based on Dr. Singer's report. 
However, a year later, actually, about the same time that the order from Judge Bulwer came down in August, the, that same court uh, changed its mind and excluded Dr. Halsinger's opinion and decided to decertify the class, uh, which was a big, uh, big strategic, not big strategic, but a big issue uh, at that particular point in the litigation in Epic Games versus Apple. Now, here uh, in the motion to exclude Dr. Hal Singer, we see a similar issue happening in the fact that Zufa unveils a new expert, do uh, a Dr. Leonard, and he his opinions uh, rebut Dr. Hal Singer's uh, methodologies. Now, this has happened before. We will talk about Dr. Topol's uh, opinion, but the unveiling of a new expert after the deadlines to designate experts seems to be an interesting play by, by Zufa. Simply because, as what has happened already, Zufa is, I mean, the lead plaintiffs have already filed a motion to strike his declaration, Dr. Leonard's de declaration, simply because it's after the fact. They there was a deadline, and Zufa decided not to utilize this Dr. Leonard until after the deadline. So why do that? Well, uh, there's a couple reasons. Uh, there is the belief that maybe they they persuade uh, Judge Bulwer with reading this uh, opinion. Obviously, it's after the fact, so there are uh, grounds to exclude this. But what if they don't? What if Judge Bulwer decides that this, too, is an important piece that we need to decide in factoring in this lawsuit? I mean, he waited so long for that Olean case to resolve that, you know, maybe he he wants to hear all of the important in, in, evidence. And it, the Dr. Leonard... Uh, declaration, interesting enough, in the motion to exclude is attached as Exhibit 27 out of 30 exhibits. So you could tell that they were trying to bury the declaration. They were not, they're, they were not uh, utilizing it as a key uh, front and center exhibit there. They, they kind of uh, put it uh, in with all the other exhibits that they had included. Now, the motion to exclude goes into a lot of uh, standards for experts and, and, and how they opine uh, issues and, sh and the, the relevancy and evidentiary requirements to include it at time of trial. There is uh, notably a lot of attacking Dr. Singer's past work, of, as we explained. Uh, the the recent uh, litigation involving Epic Games and Apple that he where he his testimony uh, was found to be uh, not able to be relied upon and excluded from the the tr the trial. So that was key. They also point out to several other of his methodologies which he utilized, which were also excluded or not not taken into consideration uh, in, in, in antitrust cases. Now, specific to Dr. Halsinger's regression analysis, Dr. Topol, which is Zufa's, Zufa's uh, original uh, expert, uh, economic expert, stated that uh, Dr. Singer's regressions were inconsistent. Uh, he gave a for example that the regression does not show any increase in revenue share in response to the fighter winning a bout, despite Dr. Singer admitting that in the real world the winning fighting fighter's base pay is nearly always doubled. Also talks about how Dr. Singer's model did not control at all for UFC's expenditures to host, promote, and produce events, which are obvious drivers of event revenue and could exceed $10 million for a single event. Now, remember, uh, Dr. Singer had used uh, wage share as his, his methodology, weighing the fighter's pay based upon the proportion of revenues 
that the promotion earned rather than a wage level, which Topol and Zufa argue is the industry standard. So he so he goes into uh, the Google Play Store. Uh, 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 expert opinion. They also talk about uh, the fact that the multivariate regression analysis, which Dr. Singer was believed was sound, was used incorrectly. So basically, Zufa again talk attacks uh, Dr. Singer's expert opinion, saying he he essentially uh, tweaked the model so it would come out with the with the answer that he wanted. Uh, that was a key thing that was I- indicated several times uh, in, the, in the previous motion to exclude. It was talked about during the uh, expert hearings way back in August of 2019. Uh, the fact of the matter that sometimes experts will try to come to the answer that is wanted by the, par- the, the party that hires them rather than uh, independently coming up with their own uh, analysis and conclusion. This will be an interesting uh, uh, thing to look into. Now, obviously, one could think that Judge Bulwer would side with, uh, side with, uh, with the plaintiffs He might just uh, not even look to Dr. Leonard's uh, analysis since he he was uh, identified late by Zufa. He has already said that the standard utilized by Dr. Singer is sound and can be can be utilized so we are looking at what evidence does it pass the evidentiary standard which is evidentiary rule 702 also known as the daubert rule daubert being a case in which the is the uh, central case regarding the uh inclusion of expert opinion and to summarize the expert opinion can be introduced into evidence if it's if it's sound scientific uh, uh, sounds scientifically and is within the industry standards as as far as whatever uh, whatever space that they are in like if it's whether it be economics or business or science or medicine or uh, whatever that would be the expert opinion uh, expert report opinions are included if they meet a certain standard within the industry but that is such a subjective issue for courts and attorneys that it can be argued uh to it could be argued on and on and on as to what uh, what is a relevant and it should be included under the Daubert test and what is not relevant and should not be included in under the Daubert test. Uh, it, it, you would one would think that a, a test like that would stifle uh, methodologies, new methodologies and coming up with uh, models and things of that nature and perhaps be too uh, liberal in allowing a lot of uh, a differing, uh, tests in simply because they're within the industry but are um, uh, shaped in certain ways to come up to a certain conclusion and answer uh, to side with the party that hired the expert. <clears throat> so uh, the first question as far as what, what we're going to be looking at is whether or not do, uh, excuse me whether or not Judge Bulwer looks at this because uh, again, this has been already decided by Judge Bull, where we we uh, we can we think that he may still look at it because it's based on the merits now, not based on a standard uh, for class certification. But it also includes some things, including Dr. Leonard's uh, declaration, where he examines Dr. Singer's uh, me- uh, uh, methodologies and uh, criticizes them. That opinion should not probably be uh, brought in as evidence simply because Dr. Leonard has not been identified as an expert. Now, Zufa will probably argue that Dr. Leonard is not an identified expert, but just merely a consultant. That's kind of a way that 
uh, parties get get away with this, not get away with this, but work around this this uh, this sort of critiquing by a, uh, a outside consultant uh, rather than identify them as an expert. Now, obviously. The plaintiffs have filed the motion to strike, so basically saying, court, don't look at, look at this motion to exclude, and moreover, don't look at this guy's opinion, Dr. Leonard's opinion. That would probably be a, a thing that uh, plaintiffs will argue and say, uh, but Zufa would probably argue that, you know, this guy's a consultant, he's not going to be testifying at time of trial. Plaintiffs will probably want to depose him anyway just because they want to get to the bottom of what, how he came to these conclusions as far as how he is debunking uh, Dr. Singer's uh, and critiquing Dr. Singer's uh, opinion. So that's it for, for today. We'll probably, we'll probably look at the other two uh, motions as well, as well as Dr. Leonard's uh, whole declaration, because I think that's interesting too. It's Jason Cruz with The Legal Submission. Have a great day.